a video on doing a two course one pot meal so I was having a play around with something the other day um, and I kind of thought we could um, we could do instead of just like one pot cookery we can get two two courses from the same kind of dish so what I want to do is I want to uh, cook some meat and some vegetables and some chickpeas together and then we'll take out some of the vegetables and make a soup out of that um, and then we'll still have a bit of meat and some chickpeas and some vegetables to kind of have as the main course and we can uh, some like make some mashed chickpeas um, so I kind of thought that would be that would be kind of quite interesting but then I was I was thinking about it a little bit more and I was kind of thinking we could probably there's, there's varying kind of degrees of what we can actually do so I can remember what I was going to do yes so I was kind of thinking well we could just you could just have it as a one pot dish so you could have like a chickpea and pork belly and vegetable stew um, so uh, and just have it as a main course or I was kind of thinking oh what we can do is we can take out the meat and the chickpeas and the carrots that I'm going to use and you could have those as your main course uh, with a little bit of a cooking liquor and then we could take the onions and the cooking liquid and we could turn that into a soup I thought that's kind of quite interesting but then I was kind of thinking well actually what we could do is we could if it was just using the the onions and the cooking liquid uh, to make a soup we could actually make an we could actually use some of the chickpeas in that soup as well so we'd make a chickpea soup and we could leave the carrots in and we could leave uh, so it could be a a chickpea and vegetable um, soup uh, so we could do it that way and then you could have to have the meat with something something else so it's kind of like that and then I was kind of thinking well actually we could make a like a chickpea sauce to go with the slow cooked pork and the chickpea mash as well so I kind of thought we're going to do a lot a lot of a few different things to kind of see uh, what we can do so this is a bit of and also uh, yeah um, and then I've got some pork belly so but I'm going to do out of, out of interest for most of me I'm going to do two things with the pork belly we're going to leave one bit of the pork belly whole so this is the I need to cut that bit of skin off because I'm not going to use that in the same way I'm used to this. so this is the bit of the pork belly with the bones in we're going to leave the bones on so that's going to be the pretend that's going to be the joint bit and then the other bit of the pork belly I've split down into the layers so I've cut out the excess fat and sinew between the layers and we're going to roll that up uh, like a bit of a brujole type of thing or a porchetta um, so I tried a, a, a like a bacon porchetta um, a couple of months back and it was all right but the fat really didn't uh, didn't render out of the center of the, of the of the pork of the bacon that I made pork belly bacon that I made um, so it was, it was, I mean, I ate it, but I can't imagine that it'd be everyone's kind of cup of tea. These are just the offcuts from the pork belly. So the bits that are in between, like the bits in there, we've cut out the excess bits of fat and there's a little bit of gristle. Connective tissue is connective tissue gristle. No, it's not. They're like connective tissue gristle. And we're just going to crisp those up and render out some of that fat. And then we'll use that fat to brown off the meat. So I'm just doing, trying to do two things at, at once and be a little bit more... A little bit more um, organized so three layers of pork and then what we're gonna do well we could stuff that but I don't really you know that's another that's another bit of the job so I think what we'll do is we'll just roll it up and tie it up and then it's a little bit like a porchetta like that. I hope I said that correctly I probably didn't and I've left some of the fat on the outside so we'll crisp that up on the outside as well and then slowly braise it and then I'm also going to put that bit of skin in with the um, dish as well because there's lots of flavor in the skin um, so there's no point wasting that I mean put it in you don't have to eat it if you don't want to eat the skin uh, but it's kind of quite I quite like things like that and then um, then you can then you can give it to the dog or then you can throw it away or then you could crisp it up type of thing but I'm just gonna think we'll cook that in as well and then we're not wasting any kind of flavor so two what did this weigh beforehand Let's, uh, should I weigh it? Yeah, well, let's weigh it. And then we've got an idea of of how many portions and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of quite important. So that weighs 480 grams. That and that weigh 
380 grams. So we know how roughly how much pork we've got. Now, to roll things up, I can't get the hang of butcher's knots. Uh, I asked the butcher to teach me, and he did the, the classic thing when someone's not particularly very good at teaching other people how to do it. He did it so fast that I really couldn't see what he was doing properly. So we'll do the cheeky method of wrapping things up. So length of string underneath, and then what you do is you go, can you see? Yes, so we go, loose end we go around once, around a second time, pull tight like that. Now, this is where you generally need someone else to give you a hand because the knot slips, but because we've gone around twice, the tension in the string holds that together, and then we can just knot that for a second time there, and then that'll hold to yeah, let's snip that off. Leave a little bit of length so you know where it is on the skin. Now we could stuff it, but I can't be bothered. So we could stuff it with um, bread and some herbs and do like a rajol type of thing, but I can't bother doing that because I'm doing enough already. But it gives you an option, doesn't it? It does, that you can split the, they haven't done it properly. Uh, so same again, so not once, go around the string a second time. Tension holds it all together, pull tight, and then put a second knot, put a third, well, third knot really in there, and then that'll hold that tight. So, uh, yeah, well, where was my train of thought? That's fine, that's fine. Um, I've lost my train of thought. That's browning, isn't it? So now, I'm going to cook those in with it all as well. So, that in there, and Move those to the side, then we caramelize a little bit more, and then that in there as well. And then we'll just give that a bit of color and give it a little bit of flavor as well. And then we'll go through what we're going to do with the rest of the stuff working the clock. So, originally, really should wipe that board down, raw, raw pork in it. but anyway, not to worry, we'll clean everything afterwards. So, originally, I uh, dried chickpeas, there was about 550 grams. I've soaked them overnight. That's left us with uh, about 1,000, 1.2 kilos worth of um, hydrated chickpeas. You could use chickpeas, um, so like for this recipe, um, I want plenty of chickpeas left over as well. So um, maybe that's probably a little bit too much. But if you're using jarred uh, or tinned chickpeas, uh, probably aim for about 1.2 kilos or one kilo of, of chickpeas. And if you're using jarred or tinned chickpeas, we're going to use the liquid to cook the pork in from the jars and tins, and but we're also going to use that liquid in there to be the base liquid to cook those first. So they're probably going to take about three hours. These cheap people take about half an hour, as will the vegetables that we're going to put in. So cook those until they're almost tender, and then we'll put the chickpeas in and cook it that way with the with the vegetables. So we've got some carrots, just this cheapy wonky ones from the supermarket. Um, they're fine actually. Um, sometimes they're a little bit bruised and a little bit battered. You've just got to go through the packets just to, to, to find the ones that are that are a decent size uh, and not too and not too roughed up. Now, when we're cooking the pork, what I kind of thought to do as well is to add extra flavour and not waste anything. We'll put the carrot peelings and trimmings in with the liquid that we're cooking the pork in. We're not going to salt that liquid because any kind of salt that we put in there uh, will take, make the chickpeas. Uh, take longer to cook uh, if there's any kind of salt in the uh, liquid it'll take chickpeas will take like four times as long to cook so we're not going to do that we're going to add salt at the end and we don't pork's generally okay with not being seasoned too heavily anyway and then we've got some onions which will be the base for the soup and for the sauce is that all oh yes and then for seasoning we could just use salt but i'm going to use chicken stock cubes which will put the chicken stock cubes in and the seasoning in when the chickpeas are cooked so brown these off make them go nice and caramelized and then we'll add that chickpea water to there along with the pork skin slowly braise that for three hours slowly 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 on the on the lowest setting could do it in the oven like 120 degrees something like that once you bring it up to the boil kind of bring it up to the boil on top of the stove and then put it into the oven at about 125 degrees for about three hours maybe three maybe four something like that um but we'll brown these so are these browning hopefully probably into a little bit longer hopefully they're caught on the bottom of the pan but there we go so that's what i'm doing hopefully i've 
explain what I'm doing, but it'll be a, it'll probably something else. Because I'm going to go, oh, it's Sunday, so I'll meet my mum for coffee, and then I'm going to go swimming. So I potentially we'll think of more ideas to do. But anyway, so you don't need to see the browning, and we're back when we are all browned and adding water to and for the next bit of the cooking process. So, they have browned nicely. I have peeled the carrots. There is 500 grams worth of carrots, um, and that was before peeling and um, trimming. So, we'll keep the ends like that. They'll go in, but the stalk end, that's going to go in the compost pile. And then we've got about 700 grams worth of onions, and that's the unpeeled weight. Now, I think there's a little bit too much fat in there. It's not the best pan for frying things with this, so there's a little bit too much fat. So we'll just pour some of that fat out. We can always add it back later. I don't want to get rid of all the fat because oh, a bit of meat that fell on the floor, but that's fine. Two second rule, or is it a five second rule? I can't remember. So that meat's slightly stuck. So we've got some caramelization on the bottom of the pan, a little bit too much. But not to worry, that'd be fine. So, and hands again. Now, can we add this chickpea water without? No, let's just create some washing up. So, chickpea water in. And then we might just have to top up a little bit more. Yeah, we need some more liquid. But I want to use as little liquid as possible because any kind of liquid that we add to a soup or a a, a, a casserole or a stew is going to leach flavour out of the things that we are that we are cooking. So let's add those carrot peelings. We're going to strain them out. Are we? Yes, we are. We can pick through it. So they're going to go in as well. So they're going to add some flavour, free flavour, instead of it going on the compost heap. So they can go in there like that. And I suppose you could, as long as you chop the we well, just took the ends off the carrots. You actually don't need to, you don't need to peel the carrots. We could just we could just not peel them and leave them in whole. As long as you chop the end off, where all the grit and grime is, then that would be fine. Ah, chicken, uh, chicken. Um, oh yeah, that was it. So I'm using pork, but we could use chicken legs. I think chicken legs would work in this really well. So the skin's going in as well. There's a bit of fat, a bit of flavour. So and the banana is topping up a little bit more. So what we got? To do so, more liquid. I think that'll be enough actually. Yeah, as little liquid as possible because it'll leach out the flavours into the cooking liquid, which is kind of uh, we want that to happen ish, but not want we don't want to have all the flavour of the pork to go into the cooking liquid. So, up to the boil and then down to a really, really, really slow simmer until it's almost, almost, almost cooked and tender. Right, let's have a look at this pork. So if the skewer goes through easily, and when we try and lift the skewer out, uh, the meat stays in the pan, we know it's tender and ready. Okay, so it's falling off the skewer, so we know that is super tender all the way through. Now, thing is, do I leave the pork in there, and cook the chickpeas, at the same time. We'll straighten out the other things as well. Or do we take the pork out and then add it back later? I don't know. Um, but we certainly need to get rid of those peelings. And we need to taste it. We need to taste it. Oh. So let's taste and see what we think. No, oh, it's nice, isn't that? You get the porky flavour. Um, now, I was thinking I needed, I needed to add some extra things to this to this video, the things that I've thought about. So, you don't have to use chickpeas. It could be any dried beans that you want. So like cannellini beans, black eyed peas, anything like that would work in place of the chickpeas. It's, I'm only using chickpeas because I've got chickpeas. Um, and I kind of think chickpea mash is, is rather quite delicious. Uh, well, I suppose it's got lots of butter in. But there again, mashed potatoes is only nice when it's got lots of butter in as well. So, that's my thoughts on that. Um, and I was kind of thinking, like normally when we do, when I'm doing videos, I kind of try and keep things as cheap as possible. Um, so that means like cooking bacon. Uh, unfortunately, cooking bacon salty, and any kind of salt in there, like I've said uh, already, is going to make the chickpeas 
not cook as quickly. It'll take far too long for them to cook if there's any kind of saltiness of that liquid. So we can't use cooking bacon on this one, but chicken would be, chicken legs would be fine. So and then I kind of thought, oh, what we'll do as well is we will we'll get that. Let's have a look at this bit of pork skin. I reckon we'll be able to crisp that up in the oven. So we'll take that out. See, it's nice and it's nice and tender. Nice and tender is that pork skin. So we'll so let the flavour and the kind of jellies come out of it. So, but we can we should be able to. That's a bit of that pork. Hmm. That's a bit of pork trimming, is that? So, we can crisp that up in the oven because all the fat's going to come out of it and the jelly. So, we'll be able to crisp that up in the oven. I think we'll have a go at that. What we'll do is we'll put it on a in a tray in between two layers of, of baking parchment and probably weight it down and they'll be able to get it crispy. I think I will take that pork out of there and put it in a covered container because it doesn't want to be cooked any more than that probably left a little bit too long but we live and learn don't we so we'll strain that juice when it comes home from swimming and we'll cook the chickpeas and we'll put in the carrots we're going to leave the carrots quite chunky so we'll cook that in, cut that into four like one two three four that into four that into two or two that into two that's how it is keep those nice and big and chunky and then we'll kind of keep keep lots of flavor the smaller you cut things, the more flavour you lose. But also, you lose from the actual actual thing, but you also impart flavour into uh, what you're cooking it into. So that's a little bit of a tip. And then onions, I think we'll just cook, we'll peel them, cut them in half. Um, I think, and then that'd be easiest to fish them out. Now it's another thing I wanted to add. But if we were just having it as a, I don't like, if in all honesty, I don't like eating onions whole like that. So if we just to peel it and, and poach it in that stock, I don't find onions that interesting to eat like that. I much prefer them if they are sliced or diced into a dish. I just, I think they're a bit rubbish. Uh, you know, unless you do lots to them. But so um, if I was doing this dish and I wasn't turning the onions, if I was just doing like a chickpea and, and, and pork stew, I'd slice or dice the onions and cook them that way. I wouldn't leave them whole, but we're going to leave them whole just so we can pick them out and we can put them into the sauce that we're going to make and to the soup, and the two soups we're going to make. But anyway, that'll be when I come off the swimming. So I have pulled the meat out of the cooking liquid. Chickpeas are in the uh, cooking liquid, so carrots in. We might need a little bit more liquid. And I do have something I want to use up, actually. And I've got a little bit of, it's not stock as such. But it's the um, liquid from when I was um, rendering some fat at work. So it's kind of gelatinous, stocky. So if we need a little bit more liquid, that can go in. Oh, that might be okay. It might be okay. Now, the more, the less liquid we use, the more intensified flavour will be. So more liquid will water everything down in flavour. But we'll see how we go. The chickpeas might soak up a little bit of liquid. But also, the vegetables might release some of theirs. So, that and uh, like that. And then, later on, I've strained out the peelings and those little bits of meat. So, but we'll give these carrots a taste. You could, we didn't have to peel the carrots uh, if we wanted to be a little bit more rustic, if we weren't that bothered. As long as we wash them. But, no, those carrots are fine. Um, but we could just we could have just left them in, you know. Um, not the peel. Left the pe if we're going to leave the peelings in, we might as well just not peel the carrots. That's what I'm saying. So how's the meat taste? Nice. A little bit of a chef treat. There we go. So that's that. Remember, no salt because we don't want to chopping up the chickpeas. So these are the two bits of meat now. I was thinking while I was swimming that we really should cut this cut the skin off this bit of pork and crisp that up in the oven with the other bit of skin, which would be a nice other little bit of a chef's treat. Although it's going to make this video even longer, isn't it? But I think for the number of dishes we're going to get out of it, 
I think the length of the video will justify it. And I'm not that bothered about the length of the video. So, oh, I've got skin. And then this is the other bit of skin here with a nice nipple on it, which I'm not sure people would really want to see. So, let's just whip off this bit of fat there. Because it might just slow the crisping up process down if it's a little bit uneven. So that not like that. And then we'll have that in half as well. So we might get some fat rendering out of that this as well. So but that'll help with the crisping up of the of the skin. It'll make a nice bit of crackling. So that'll be right, that'll be right. So on a tray in the oven with another tray on top to keep it fat flat and then maybe on a bit of foil as well just to stop all that fat rendering out of it onto the tray and making a mess and making me washing up the chickpeas are getting to the stage of being tender so we can hmm, maybe we should cook them a little bit longer no I don't think they'll toughen up I don't think they'll toughen up oh. Let's put in, just for the last 10 minutes of cooking, 10 30 minutes of cooking, let's chuck in three chicken stock cubes. So, chicken stock cubes are, in my eyes, the best thing to kind of go for. Because vegetable stock cubes make everything taste like a vegetable stock cube. But a chicken stock cube doesn't make everything taste like a chicken stock cube. It's just more of a balanced kind of flavour. So. That can go in there, that will flavour the carrots, the onions, the stock in there, the liquid, and the chickpeas. Just for the last 15 minutes or so, and just leave everything super tender. And then we'll have a faff around and see what we can make out of it all. Everything's cooked, tastes nice. So three stock cubes, with three stock cubes enough. We could probably get away with another one actually. Let's just get away with another one. So we'll say four stock cubes. And then I've taken out the onions, so we've got the onions in there, we'll make some soup out of that. I've taken out the carrots, and we'll do, uh, well I'm going to have those as a part of the main course. But we could make carrot soup, but we'll, well, um, yeah, we could, we, could make, we could make carrot soup. Um, which is kind of stretching what we're actually doing. You know, we can, you know, we can say we can make an onion soup, we can make a carrot soup, and we can make a chickpea soup we can also make a chickpea and vegetable soup so i don't know how many things that is but we'll talk we'll have a bit of a, a tot up before we go i'll put the meat uh, back in with the chickpeas and the excess uh, and the liquid just to kind of warm through and then we'll put the lid back on so that can just sit happily while we faff around and see if we can make a bit of a chickpea sauce to go with this so half of the one in the onions and some chickpeas and then we're going to blend it all together yeah that'll stretch and then we're going to add some butter. We might need a little bit more stock, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we need a little bit more liquid, but let's put in some butter now so it starts to melt. So the butter will just enrich the sauce and hopefully it will multiply into it and it won't split out. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, it certainly needs some more liquid in it. So what have we got? If we get the fat from the top of here as well, that'll just enrich the sauce as well. So just about that much. Obviously, you make how much, how much sauce you want. Uh, you know, more chickpeas, more onions to make more sauce. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so we get like a pouring type of sauce trying not to get any chickpeas in there 
Think of it like a, a gravy. To go with the with the pork and the, and the mashed chickpeas and your uh, any braised carrots. All right. That will do. Let's. I need a longer lead. I need a longer lead on that blender. So how does that taste? Very nice, very nice. So, we've made a chickpea sauce, that's another thing we've added. So, well, let's make some soup. So, these are the rest of the onions. There will be a few onions in there, but not that many. We can turn that up there. So, let's see how much soup we can get. and it'll bulk it out even further. We might do that actually. But that much liquid. Put it back in, have I? the amount of onions in and then make the soup that way and then milk just to make it a little bit more creamy give that a taste right that needs seasoning so salt and another little full worth of cooking juices. carrots into that as well and we're going to make a carrot soup and we're going to put some chickpeas in now so we're going to make a onion and chickpea soup so that's three dishes isn't it so that that certainly we're going to need a fair old bit of stock blend this down <laughs> Toast. 
That's lovely. So that's an onion and chickpea soup. And well, it could be a carrot and chickpea soup. So we've made more dishes from next to nothing from that. And then let's mash these chickpeas. So we get that meat out of there. I'll do that off camera because that's pouring things into different containers using it's always a bit messy and I need to move the board around anyway so we'll pause and be back and then we're going to mash those chickpeas right so I'm strained up the juice and pull the pork out of it certainly going to need some pepper and I certainly need a little bit of salt even though we have seasoned it with stock cubes and then butter so let's be generous with the butter I'm not saying I've been good this week, just food wise, I've been healthy, I haven't. We went out for a dirty burger yesterday, it was delicious. Well, it's a dirty breakfast burger actually, and it was delicious. Then we went for a walk, and then we had a, a bun afterwards, and another coffee. So that wasn't healthy at all, was it? Right, masher. And that mash the chickpeas. That's a lot of butter, and it is. It's one of those chef secrets. Um, is butter. My food tastes delicious in a restaurant. Well, good restaurants is the amount of butter they use. So I'll keep on mashing those. And then we've made mashed chickpeas, and we're going to have that with big carrots and some pork, and we'll give that all a taste. So I'll carry on mashing. Give it a taste. Let's see if we're where we are with the with the seasoning. If it, need, if it needs any more. I need a bit more salt. No, I don't want to. We could get the stick blender in there, but I don't want a. I don't want a hummus consistency. I still want it to be like a mash to sit the uh, the pork on. But I'll carry on mashing, and then we'll be back. Right, I took some mashing. Did that. That took some mashing. So, mash chickpeas. So we've even got hummus out of this, haven't we? Okay, yeah, we've got hummus. Licking my fingers, which I shouldn't be doing. And then let's have a look at these two. Let's put that somewhere safe so it's not going to burn me workshops. So let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. Again, I've got a bit of chickpea in the back of my throat. So, see there's on there. Oh, my sauce is wanting to boil over. That's fine. So, snip that bit of string off. Snip that bit of string off. And we'll cut that open and have a look at that. See how well that's worked. So, I think this one worked. It's just another option, isn't it? You just leave the, you can leave the pork belly whole, or you can separate it out. Oh, that's worked. It's all written down. So that's certainly what we need to do with a. If we're going to do a, a porchetta, we need with pork belly. We need to cut it open and get out all the insides. So that, that, that. That I'm going to be greedy, and then a few carrots. I'm going to find my spoon. No, lost my spoon. Don't want my juice. I just want my carrots. So carrots, and then a little bit of sauce over. And then we'll try that. So, sauce probably could do with a bit, being a bit thinner than that, but it's fine. Get the sauce over the top of it. There we go, we'll take a picture of that, and then we'll eat it. Right, let's cut into this pork. Let's cut into this bit anyway. So it should just be able to go straight down in between the two bones. Oh, look at that. Absolutely falling to bits. How's it taste? Certainly tender. 
Mmm, that's delicious. That is delicious. So, do it out of the way, and then... We've got the pig skin as well, haven't we? And the pork skin. Pig skin. And the pig skin American base... Uh, American... Um, what we call it? American football, isn't it? Pig skin. That's what, that's what we call it. So then, we've got crispy pork as well. Oh, that doesn't want to come out of the tray. So, how's that looking? Is that going nice and crispy? So, the one that came off the pork, that's crispened up. That's nice. Oof. That was wanting to explode. Was that the nipple that went? I think that was the nipple that exploded. Yeah, it's, gone, it's not going crispy crispy, but it's certainly going to be a nice thing to eat. But anyway, there we go. Um, that was lots of dishes from one pot, wasn't it? So, onion soup, carrot soup, and then we can do a chickpea soup, and then we've done hummus, that's another thing we could add, and then we've got the pork as well, haven't we? Um, so that's that's five, and then we've also made a sauce as well, So, but that's, classed as, that's in with the pork, isn't it? So we've got fa five, three... A carrot soup, an onion soup, a and, a, and a onion and chickpea soup. That's three, and then the pork dish, so the pork, and then the and then the hummus. That's five. So we've got five things out of one pot, and all delicious. I think that's just.